Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Guitar Talk with Todd. Thank you so much for checking in today. Please hit that subscribe button in the lower right hand corner. I really, really appreciate it. Find me on Facebook at Todd BB Music. We always have a million things going on here. Guitar reviews, artist interviews, lessons. Uh, we're going to be doing memorabilia showcases coming up here. Uh, just talking about classic albums and whatnot. All things guitar and music. So... Please be with us. Today we have another guitar review. This is an original 1957 Gibson Les Paul Jr. right out of the factory in Kalamazoo. It's a real honor for me to have this. A private owner brought this one in today. This is a great vintage piece here. Not a reissue. Not from the custom shop. This is the real deal. Uh, please check out my video I did a while back on a 1961 Les Paul Jr., which is went on to become the SG, of course. I'll put the link down below. That was probably the most mint guitar I've ever seen for a vintage uh, 1961. It was unplayed, so please check that out. We're going to make a lot of references to that today. Uh, this is a beautiful example. Got some natural relicking going on here. I'll kind of get up in the light here. We'll take a look at this in the case like we always do. Classic, uh, most of the stuff on here is original speed knobs with the bleeders on here. The original P90 pickup, which of course is revered. And I just love these with the dog ear on here, the dog ear style. Stop bar, tailpiece, original pick guard. Rosewood fingerboard with the dot inlays going all the way up here to the headstock. Definitely replaced the uh, tuning machines here with Shaler hardware, uh, original truss rod cover, and then of course we have the silkscreen Gibson logo and the Gibson Les Paul Jr. logo on there too. Um, special shout out to Death Wish Coffee today <laughs> for their awesome swag. Uh, if you haven't tried Death Wish Coffee, definitely give them a try. Not a paid promotion or anything. I just love Death Wish, so I'm sending a shout out to them. Um, check them out. But uh, we love the P90 pickups on this show. To me, to my ear, that cl they clean up and go dirty even better than a humbucker. I mean, they just get a beautiful, crisp, you know, clean tone. so much clarity in the clean tones and then of course when you crank her up and let her go Alright, one other thing I want to mention, um, I had a conversation with Dickie Betts about this one time. I've been very fortunate to be around Dickie from the Allman Brothers Band numerous times through the years. Super great guy. And I had a pretty long conversation with him one night about vintage guitars and really just any guitars. And his theory, and I completely agree, is when you're testing out a guitar, play it electric guitar I'm talking about. Play it just completely unplugged. And just hear how the wood resonates and how the strings sound just on. If it's completely dead and you're not getting any 
sustain out of a cord or anything. You've got a dead piece of wood. The guitar's not going to sound good, you know, amplified, or you're going to have to use a million effects to get it to. If you're getting great sustain, which again, this is an old piece of wood from 1957, so it's just ringing out beautiful. And I mean, the sustain and the clarity and everything on that is just fantastic, and I'm not plugged in at all. And uh, Dickie's theory is that's how you test out a guitar, and I completely agree with him. I mean, everybody wants to just run into a Marshall stack or whatever and let her rip to try out a guitar when you go to get one. That doesn't hurt. I mean, sure, go ahead and try it out, too, but the true test of a guitar is, you know, go over in the corner somewhere or try to get somewhere where it's quiet and just listen to that thing unplugged and see how it resonates and sounds without even the notes, you know, without being plugged in. It just got great sustain there. I mean, those are ringing out beautifully. Everything's nice and clear and the clarity on this thing is just fantastic, even unplugged. So again, goes back to something about these old guitars from you know that era the wood was just fantastic and it's certainly done nothing but gotten better and seasoned with age for sure so keep that in mind though for sure whenever you're trying out any guitar uh like i said this has some natural relicking going on <laughs> on it and we're going to get some close-ups and look at all this in the case let's take a look at it right now check her out Okay, so here is the case for the 1957 Gibson Les Paul Jr. Obviously, right away, we could tell this is not period correct. Uh, but after a while, when you get to know these cases, you know this brown exterior with the big Gibson USA logo. We love these cases on this show. This screams pure 90s right here. Uh, you know, late 80s, early 90s, mid 90s. This was what they were all coming in at that time so the owner got you know one of these it got the classic pink interior there with the pink shroud we've had these on this show many times and uh this junior fits in beautifully in this case and it's just a perfect fit so it's great for this these would have originally came in one of the alligator cases again check out my link below for our review we did of the Mint Unplayed 1961 Gibson Les Paul Jr. SG style. Uh, that had the original alligator case, which was also in mint condition. And that's exactly what this Jr. here would have originally came in. Those were chipboard cases, as you'll see in the video. So, you know, unless they were kept under a bed or in a closet, which that one was, they kind of eventually started to fall apart. And as these guitars, the juniors, became more collectible through the years, people went more for a hard shell case like this to keep them in. So this is perfect for this. And I always love these 90s cases, too. So this works out great. So let's look at the guitar here. Um, right off the bat, you can see we got a lot of natural relicking. <laughs> no custom shop, no Murphy Lab, no anything. This is, uh, you know worn wear and tear lab this is the real deal here not to knock murphy lab at all i mean they do fantastic stuff i'm just saying this is the real deal here i'm trying to get in the lights you can see got some good you know nicks here and there as would be expected for 1957 original speed knobs on here with the pointers or the bleeders as i like to call them on here all original all original pick guard it's obviously had its share of scratches and picks through the years but that's what it's on there for there's that incredible p90 pickup with the dog ears that we love in real good shape actually it doesn't have much you know string wear on it a little bit right there off the low e which is expected it's usually again as you get to the thinner strings you don't usually have too much of that but usually it'll kind of get notches right there like you do on this one as you get up around the low E and stuff. And that's totally normal. But, I mean, other than that, the pole pieces and everything on here aged and just look fantastic. Original stop bar, tailpiece, um, just fantastic shape for 1957, really. Uh, fretboard in fantastic shape going up here with the um, 
frets. I do know that this guitar was refretted at one time. Um, and, you know, they did a fantastic job. So these are not the original frets. But again, <laughs> for a 1957, you expect that it might have been refretted several times at this point. Rosewood fingerboard dot inlays going up there. The fretboard's in fantastic shape. And coming up here, we got the original truss rod cover. And then there's that headstock with the Gibson Les Paul Jr. silkscreen logo and the Gibson silkscreen logo on there as well. Like we talked about earlier, these are replacement Shaler style tuning machine heads. Very common if you check out the link to the Jeff Beck model in Oxblood uh, 1954 that we did that has these on there because Jeff's had that too. That was a very common thing uh, in the late 60s, you know, early 70s. Shaler tuners were used to replace a lot of the older Gibson stuff that was kind of not working well anymore, starting to fall apart. And like we talked about on other episodes on these juniors, as you'll see in the 61 video, if you watch it, they've got the the white ends on them. And those are usually the plastic ends kind of deteriorate after years. That 61, they did not. It's just pristine. So definitely watch that video. But most of them would kind of fall apart and they get a little rough to turn after years and years. And a lot of guys would just kind of swap them out and put these shalers on there. So these work very well. In fact, you'll hear people say that they think they even get more sustain from, you know, because these are heavier, so you're adding more weight to the headstock. That's kind of subjective, whether you believe that or not. I guess everybody's ear is different. I never really hear too much a difference with that, but you will, will hear people say you get better sustain with these shalers or something like that on as opposed to the original because they're giving more weight and mass to the headstock. Anyway, let's flip her over here and get a look at the back. Okay, so down here at the back, we've got the beautiful mahogany back there. Obviously, a lot of natural relicing going on here as well. Uh, there is the cavity control for the one volume, one tone. I'm going to pop a picture up of that right here next to it. We've opened this up earlier, but I'm not going to do that right now. But that's what she looks like on the inside. So you can kind of see that going on there. Uh, all original on the inside as well. Looking around this on the edges, I mean, again, it's got its fair share of nicks and scratches and stuff, but as would be, you know, expected for, for 1957. I mean, this thing has been, you know, around the block. And then some original strap buttons still on there, uh, even down here on the other end, like I said, it's got plenty of nicks to go around. The one thing that's kind of a head scratcher on here, the owner and I were looking at, is this right here. That was clearly, you know, drilled, and it obviously looks like, you know, a strap button was put on there or attempted to be uh, versus, you know, where it should be up there where they originally came with. I mean, a lot of, like, on the SG that we have and even current SGs, that is where the strap button would go. So someone at some point owned this guitar and wanted the strap button back there and, um, you know, but then ended up either not doing it or whatever. That is the original strap button right here, and that would be the original location of the strap button. So kind of a shame they went ahead and did that but i mean it's really not a big deal it's a small hole doesn't affect the tone or the stability of the instrument at all so you know it is what it is no <laughs> not a big deal in the grand scheme of things there's that beautiful brown there on that mahogany neck which again fair share of nicks and bumps here for 1957 going all the way up to the shaler replacement tuners here now you can see uh, you know, not only the Shaler logo and stuff, you can see where the three in a row and you can see the dents and everything there of where the original holes would be. Um, again, very common. They're actually doing reissue stuff now where they purposely put these holes <laughs> in and stuff. So it looks like that because that's such a common thing. 
So, um, again, check out that 1961 uh, SG Les Paul Jr. video. You can see these original three in a row on here. I'm guessing that these just deteriorated and fell apart at some point, and they were replaced with shalers, which do a heck of a job. So there is the back of the guitar. Let's flip her over one more time here to the front. Okay, so there is one more shot from the front, full case. The beautiful Gibson Les Paul Jr. 1957 in the beautiful classic sunburst finish. All right, guys, so there she is in the case. Let's let her rip here. Uh, some of you have been asking about getting cleaner tone stuff. Some of you have been asking about doing more dirty tone stuff. So I always try to play something that kind of goes across the board. So I'm going to do some like a country backing type of a thing with cleaner tones. I'm going to do some slide with cleaner tones somewhat. And then I'm just going to turn her full on and let her rip over a minor key thing here. So hopefully you get to hear the full... Uh, run of the tones here that this amazing p90 pickup will put out so here we go check her out <laughs> Thank you. 
so there is the 1957 Gibson Les Paul Jr. and Classic Sunburst. Thank you so much to the private owner for letting me do a review on this today. What an amazing guitar. Uh, thanks so much, you guys, for checking in today. Once again, please hit that subscribe button in the lower right-hand corner. Follow me on Facebook at Todd BB Music. And uh, make sure you tune back in and be with us. We've got all things guitar going on here all the time. And we appreciate you being with us. Stay safe and love your dogs. And we will see you again. Take care.